All right, guys, Jim McCleary, McGolf, most worst certified club maker, club fitter. And this is what's in your drawers or what's in my drawers. And, you know, we've taken that from, you know, us old guys are basically ginormous pack rats. And we, you know, we like talking about what's in the drawers, really. And we've done very, very well. And now we've got a special guest with us. And... I first met this, well, I met him over the email. He was, helps win the Callaway community. And uh, I saw him over there answering a lot of club questions. And uh, with the new releases, I figured I'd reach out and we're going to uh, talk with Nate from Callaway. So, Nate, so letting everybody know who you are, what you do, where you're at, all that other good stuff. Yeah, Jim, thanks for having me on uh, on the stream today. It's exciting to be uh, uh, here with you. Um, I've been at Callaway now a little over six years. Uh, I've been working in the marketing department, uh, primarily uh, overseeing a, b a bunch of different things, everything ranging from the links at Petco, which is uh, that shirt where we built a golf course in the Padres baseball stadium, to, uh, you know, OGO marketing, but what has been uh, my favorite thing that I've been in charge of is I created the fitting room, um, which started about five years ago as a podcast. Uh, now it's a weekly show. Every Monday we release a new episode. Um, and today's episode is about Big Bertha Reva, which we'll probably talk about a little bit over the next hour. Um, and then every Monday night at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, we also have a live call-in radio show on Sirius XM PJ Tour Radio it's basically like car talk for golf clubs, which is a lot, uh, Jim, what I think you and your uh, audience is into as well, which is uh, helping golfers get the most out of their equipment. And then uh, especially here, you know, you've got a, a bunch of cool gear that uh, we can explore as well. Very cool. So what we have here now, what you see behind you where Nate's sitting is when you watch the the video podcast or their introductions of their new product what you'll see is this is their this is their room when i was out there for the master's class this was just being made it, it, it looks like like the ultimate man cave you know all it is is yeah. missing a putting green or something so yeah we've got some cool jerseys very, very, we got yeah. dan marino we got some uh guitars this is a new one from manny machado of the Ooh. padres there you go. So that's a new one. We got um, a little Steph Curry right there. But yeah, yeah this is our uh, podcast studio, which we have right in the office. And um, it's nice to have, you know, back when we worked in the office, most of the time we could just get up from the desk, go record a podcast or broadcast a live show. And it's nice to have that so conveniently located. So um I made a special trip into the office, special for the live stream today. Nice. I'm feeling I'm feeling honored all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so the, we'll just start. We'll get on board with talking things Callaway. Let's start with uh, Phil Mickelson. Mm. Talk about it. Talk about. I don't know if you guys are watching all those that are are in here. I'm seeing guys from Ireland and the Netherlands and the UK. I mean, just all over the place. But. Uh, Phil actually got on to the Champions Tour. Well, Phil was asked a bunch of questions when he turned 50 about, are you going to go play Champions Tour? Um, like, what are you thinking? And his answer was, originally, it was like, when you hit bombs like I do, you don't need to go play on the Champions Tour. You can still play on the PGA Tour. And I think, in this case, he needed to get some, you know, high pressures, something on the line, reps in. And he wanted to get some work in leading up to the U.S. Open. And so he said he was going to go out and he, and play, and play he did. He made that course look tiny. He oh. He's still got a ton of game. I mean, his club head speed's over 120. Um, his short game is, you know, one of the best of all time still. So, uh, yeah, Phil, I mean, I'm not shocked that Phil would go out there and win, but he dominated. He, he played really, really nice. So he's, a, he's on the short list of all those guys that come in their first, very first game onto the tour and, and win. I mean, there's, right. and the, the list is filled with some really big names from the golf history. So that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. So Phil's well, fun to watch. He's fun well, to watch. He's right fun to let. Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, I'm well. We've got Callaway is you know they've been putting out little trailers and things like that, and the new one, yeah, Big Bertha, Big Bertha. You you are one of the first in the country to have that in your hands. I think those just the demo parts just shipped on Thursday, so you got that. Um, <laughs> you you like that. Special. Yeah, that's a freshie right there. Have you hit it yet? Yes, I have. I took. I'm a lefty, so uh, all these are still virgin. The other, the and I, I hit the, I hit the lefty version, and uh, I should have. Well, I did a video, and since you said there's no embargo date, I'm going to be releasing a YouTube video on it tomorrow. Oh, that's cool. normally what we do. Is we've been we'll do the podcast on Mondays and release a video on on Tuesdays on it. So you'll be able to see what we talk about. And, and we talk about, you know, in, in talking with my rep, you know, that's where I get most of the good information from, but, uh, you know, slice correction. This is, this is eliminate that far side of the fairway. I yeah, do like this time. because if you were to hold it straight, it basically looks like that at a dress, you know, right. I'm at, what is it at two or three degrees close? Yeah, it's not that the face is closed. It's that they we've added. They call it progressive face um, or face progression, which is essentially like offset. And so it appears to be closed. It helps the cl club um, rotate a little more, rotate a little quicker. Really, this thing is all about being a slice killer. So it's super game improvement category. So you know, if you're a five handicap, this is probably not the driver for you, but. If you're a 15 and up, you know, this – and you you struggle with the ball going right, whether it's a block or a push, uh, the Big Bertha B21 was designed specifically for you. There's some ingredients in there that have never been – uh-oh. <laughs> also very durable. <laughs> yeah, but there's no some doubt. ingredients. There's some ingredients in there that have not been put in uh, to a driver uh, really yet, which is about – uh, adding a lot of, which is one of my favorite fitting words, but robustness. So spin robustness, speed robustness, and launch robustness. So that means as you are, uh, as the the impact location moves across the face, the amount of change in launch, spin, and speed is very minimal. Usually when we talk about forgiveness, we're talking about ball speed on off-center hits, but this club is very, very, very good at maintaining a constant spin rate on off-center hits and a constant uh, launch launch angle on off-center hits as well. So it's those two in addition to ball speed, which makes this club really, really forgiving, but also low spin, which is important for the person who has that big right miss. And then with the offset and with some of the internal weighting, that's also helping combat the right miss. So this this club is not intended to try to be everything to everybody. This club is really aimed at the person with the big slice, the big block, the person who's for a righty missing right, a lefty missing left, to be able to bring that person back into the fairway. Yep, so they've got, uh, here's one. There's a more of an address feature for it. Oh, there we go. Yep. And it's a dark, dark, dark midnight blue that mm -hmm. indoors looks almost black, but when you get out in the bright sun, it's got like a hint of navy blue in there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous club head, large face, uh, a new ultra strong titanium that uh, allows us to be a little more, bit more creative with the way it's shaped and still maintain uh, durability. So um, a, a really great option for those golfers who uh, have the big right miss. So the, from, uh, again, we'll go to the old guy method that, you know, Callaway used to do a lot of blue. You know, mm -hmm. they were gray and they did a lot of blue. So this is kind of a take back. I mean, you know, look, I'm I'm probably about two and a half foot from the camera and it's still still looking good. The other part is, is they did a little down home with the Big Bertha with a few of the what I call the Warbird divots mm -hmm. on both the, the heel, which would be right here, and then the toe area to kind of bring it home a little bit. And then you went a little bit newer version making it elongated and that's more oh somewhere in the 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 carbon driver era where they were trying yeah, to like oval f ftiz that was yeah. like a little bit of a triangle shape uh and so yeah that's 
that is that shape is all about forgiveness. It's about being able to move um, the center of gravity a little bit farther away from the face to add add a lot of MOI. And um, so everything in there is is really intentional in terms of specific center of gravity locations. Along with there's a three internal weights. It's a triangular weighting system. One is low forward, and what that does is it gives ball speed and low spin. One of them is going to be more towards the heel, which helps with face rotation and closure, especially for people who have a slice, they tend to have impact towards the heel. So by putting more weight behind the heel, it's allowing the center of gravity and the contact position to be more in line, which is going to generate less gear effect, which is going to generate less of a curvature. And then the last one is that one towards the back, and that's about MOI and getting as much forgiveness as we can. So um, a, 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 a really forgiving club for the people who maybe are not as consistent of impact location in the fa on the face. All right. So when the rep came down here, he brought the what we term the blow apart. And so yep. you can actually see inside the head and you get to see the jailbreak and you get to see the AI face and you get to see the carbon crown. And I, I go through that in the video and you can actually see in the in the casting or the forging whatever with the casting of the bo of the bottom you can see where the the weight is really forward there's a big old line in it where they mm -hmm. put the weight forward and then there's the the weight in the heel like you were talking and because once you get to see that and you get to see the ai face we've always you know when i when i when they first came out in the epic line we had the one for the sub-zero and the one for the regular one and uh, and I looked at him. I I put him up. And I said, "These look like ears on the inside with all the the waves and the things like that." Mm -hmm. and, and I said, "Well, you know, it it looks like a garbled mess." I said, "But take another look. You know, if you really took it, there is some serious mathematics in the movement of where that weight is. And even back right. then, it was a you know I called it fairway finding, but it you know it just what." That's not a real sexy marketing term to say, hey, you can find the fairway when you're talking about a driver as, right. as, as bashing it a million miles, right? And so it was, right. It, but it, I mean, it does it. I, I, I have the, the Maverick Sub-Zero in my bag and that right now that thing's a, a bullet. So, mm -hmm. and, and so, so any, so anybody, I'm nor, I, 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 I break 80 barely. Okay. <laughs> And, but, uh, definitely this guy, I hit a, I hit a bunch of shots and they all, again, lefty, they all went way deep inside, save one. And I, that was me purposely hanging on just to see whether or not it would go that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. But boy, oh boy, that was a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. there you go. So if you guys got, if you guys got part of the, if you're a righty and you've got a case of the rights, this very well may be it. Now mm -hmm. that's, but the, you know, everybody likes talking about the driver, but right. uh, it goes right down the line, right? We got the, the fairway wood here. Yeah. The fairway woods have a cool story to them as well. You can see there the face progression where you see, you know, that uh, top line is a little bit behind the front edge of the shaft. It looks like offset, but on woods it's technically it's not offset. Most woods are actually onset, but anyway, it, it delivers the same effect as offset wood on irons, which is uh, giving you a little more time to shut the face, helping, helping, uh, uh, you know, square the face of contact. And then these fairways as well, the face height is a little more shallow than you'll see on like the Maverick or the Epic Flash fairway woods from the past couple of years. So yeah, you can see there it's, you know, fairly flat or it's a fairly low profile face. And that's important because, Higher handicap golfers, which this is a super game improvement category club, tend to hit low on the club face. And so everything that we can do to get the center of gravity of the golf club below the center of gravity of the golf ball is what we want to do to, to promote high launch um, and, and maximizing carry. So in this case, the leading edge is a little lower across the bottom of the club face. Center of gravity position is quite low. Um, and that is all about designing to get the bottom half of the golf ball, get the golf ball easily launched into the air. And then a similar story with internal weighting um, and the progressive face helps fight the left miss and then, or the right miss, excuse me. And then the other thing worth mentioning throughout the whole set is 
the standard lie angle. So on the driver, there's adjustability. On the fairways, it's a glued hosel. But the lie angles are going to be, I believe it's about a degree or so more upright than you'll find on the Maverick, Maverick standard. Uh, it'll be similar to what you see on Maverick Max. And then Maverick Sub-Zero, what you're playing is the flattest of the bunch. Uh, but these, again, that uh, uh, the lie angle is uh, all about helping promote being able to turn the ball over, close the face. And when you can turn the ball over, not only do you tend to hit it straighter for that type of player, but it also you tend to hit it with a lot less spin. So what you end up getting is a lot more distance because it's straighter and it has less spin. So that's what we're going for with this entire lineup. Yep. So when I, what I found is when I so part of the again part of the video Nate is that I put these things together. I go into the shop and I measure them and I compare them against the spec. Yeah. And uh, and I did. I found these things to be a little bit more upright than uh, than an average driver would be. Right. Yeah. So it's not too bad. Now the one the what really surprised me as far as the look when it was really in my hand was the hybrid. You know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of a I'm kind of hybrid sensitive. I mean, I like them and everything, but. That's not a bad looking hybrid. Mm -hmm. So the yeah, the hybrids here are designed primarily. You know, some hybrids are more like mini fairways. Some mm -hmm. hybrids are extensions of the iron set. These hybrids are really designed to be integrated into the iron set because we know, especially with this type of super game improvement golfer, they're probably not hitting a four iron very consistently. And so we want to be able to, wherever that golfer starts seeing uh, what we will we'll call it compression when it comes to yardages where the five iron and the four iron start going the same distance, that's probably a pretty good clue that it's time to swap in something else besides the iron. And so these hybrids are really designed to do that nicely. Um, not only do they benefit from jailbreak, uh, AI faces, 360 face cup technology, but also um, they're going to be a little bit longer as well to really just promote a little more club head speed and uh, be able to hit it a little higher and farther. So I will say this iron, these hybrids, it will be a little player dependent based on how much spin you generate to, de to determine exactly which hybrid should go. So for example, if you stop at your five iron, in some instances for higher spin players, the five hybrid may actually be the next club that will get you a 10 to 12 or a 12 to 15 yard gap. For others, it'll be the four. So that's something worth checking out during a fitting. Um, but the reason that we do that is because we want to provide the player who has the most difficulty with launch and spin to be able to find and have an option that really helps them in the hybrid. Okay. I like the way it looked, and I did. I appreciated the fact that they were shorter because what their hybrids were basically becoming uh, different looking fairway woods for the most part right. in a lot of cases. So if you get more in tune with your set, uh, you, you just you do better. You hit better shots. And yep. last but not least, the iron. The iron. Yeah, these are a little bit of a throwback, I think, to some of the most popular Callaway irons like the X16. The original Big Bertha iron, um, these have what I call a confidence-inspiring look. When you hold this thing down behind a golf ball, it looks like there's a lot of face for you to make contact with. And it looks like, uh, you know, like sometimes even though they're gorgeous, you know, if you're looking down at a set of blades, they look beautiful in your hands, but you put them behind a golf ball and it's like, e, that is a small club head. You will not have that with this club head. Thick top line. Plenty of offset, um, big club face, and these things are, are uh, missile launchers. It's got tons and tons of technology, 360 face cup, a new technology, visible tungsten energy cores. They call it VTEC, and you can actually see that in the cavity. Um, and every single club has a different uh, size and placement of the tungsten energy core, which is wrapped in urethane microspheres which is all about sound um, and feel. So you're getting the benefits of basically like fairy wood technology and an iron, but with the sound and feel that you expect and you want from an iron where it's a short reverberation time and uh, all of that without sacrificing any of the ball speed 
that some of the our competitors, when we've tested some of the things they're inserting into their iron heads to give them that sound and the dampening of the sound, it also dampens the ability for that face to flex. And so uh, the urethane microspheres has the urethane that a lot of other brands are using but it's infused with a patented process of these microscopic glass beads that essentially create air pockets. So you get the benefit of the sound vibration, but the air pockets allow it to flex. And that uh, is the, is the you know, we're eliminating a trade-off of sound or distance, sound or ball speed. Uh, now you can have both with that technology. Now, what are the iron, what's the tallest iron that the Big Bertha is going to come in? I think it goes down to a four iron, but I'm going to double check that for you right now just to make sure okay. that I'm saying that correctly. Yes, it's a four iron, which is 19 degrees. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's going to be the longest iron. It goes all the way down to the lob wedge Ooh, as well. So you, you can, yeah, that, that, that is a big lob wedge, but. Give me just one second. Yep. It's funny, my dog figured its way in and now it needed out. All right. <laughs> well, not, a, not only that, but there's a big push from the Callaway folks to deal with the ladies. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the women's category has always been one that's been really important to Callaway. And I would say if you look at the competitive offerings, Callaway's always had more offerings specifically for females. But something really cool happened in the last couple of years. And part of this was driven, believe it or not, from um, our OGO brand. And on the OGO brand, uh, we found when we were doing some consumer research that the female golfer, especially in the golf bag category, was vastly overlooked and vastly ignored. So we did a ton of research into um, like what would be different or what could we create if we said, let's have female golfers create products for female golfers. And that is like the inspiration and that's the design mentality. And what we found was a number of things. First of all, uh, well, I'll say probably not the most important, but one of the things I thought was interesting is color. So something as simple as color, typically for the female categories, pink, purple, sometimes a teal. And the number one selling bag, uh, golf bag for women was black. Go figure. And so... Uh, we formed here at Callaway uh, what we're, we're calling the, the Women's Task Force. And the Women's Task Force is built up, um, I believe it's about 10 to 15 uh, females in the office, all of whom are golfers, all of whom are as passionate about golf and golf clubs as uh, all the rest of us. And um, they've really led an effort to not only uh, create products specifically for females, but also the marketing is the, the whole entire thing, the R&D the development, the design specs, the marketing, the communication, all of that. And so Big Bertha Reva is a is the first product line from that. And Reva is going to be a, a sub-brand for Callaway now that you'll see a lot of women's products come out under that Reva brand name. The first of which is the Big Bertha Reva. It has a similar technology platform as Big Bertha B21 that we've been talking about. So it is designed specifically for the, the high handicap you know, beginning female golfer, that super game improvement category. But the actual clubs themselves are actually quite different than Big Bertha B21. The loft packages are slightly different. The weighting is a little is different. Mm -hmm. The colors are different. Um, and it's really designed around the data that we've accumulated and the research we've accumulated of higher handicapper female golfers and trying to build products specifically for them. So in the past or other brands, you may see the same exact club, but with a shorter shaft and a different paint job. That is not what this is. Everything from the bulge and roll to the uh, the the weightings, the internal weighting to the loft packages, it's all new and all specifically designed for the high handicap female golfer. Now, when we get into we've we've done nothing but talk about heads, which is awesome, but we've also done a little bit of rollback on the shaft. In that, yes. We got yes, you know, beautiful. Yeah, RC the beautiful is. ion. It's ion plated, so it's got a nice like premium mirror finish. And 
Um, Richard C. Helmstetter was one of the uh, – he was the first, one of the most iconic uh, heads of R&D at Callaway. Start, was there from the beginning with Mr. Callaway. And um, uh, he invested a lot in shaft R&D, shaft research, shaft know-how, understanding the dynamics of the way – that shafts and clubs work together to, de to deliver ball speed, launch, spin, distance. And this was a product where we felt like um, some of that internal know-how we wanted to revisit. So the RCH shaft, we actually partnered with uh, one of the most well-known shaft manufacturers in the world that your audience undoubtedly knows of. And we worked with them specifically combining our internal knowledge with their know-how and built this specifically for the Big Bertha B21 family. And so it's a product that um, the performance is outstanding, the look is outstanding, and it's something that is a little bit, like you said, of uh, I'll say the, the performance inspiration is a throwback to the RCH shafts of the early 2000s. But make no mistake, there's nothing that's the same between those two shafts. This is all new technology, all new material, all new design, all new, new construction to deliver lightweight when you, where you need it, stability where you need it, and just fantastic performance all around. So when we got, when I got my fitting parts in, you get a 65 gram shaft, a 55 gram shaft, a 45 gram shaft, and a 40 gram shaft. Stiff, regular, A, and then the ladies. However, mm -hmm. there's a few, if you're a 65, I think you get an S and an R, you're in the 55 you get the 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 whole range of them if you're in the 45 it's the a and the r and then if you're in the 40 it's the ladies flex so and and that's why i stress in the video again is that hey look you know you, just because it's 65 you might need an r flex and maybe a little bit shorter so that the feel is there good to go right. and, and so on even down the line i mean it could just keep going and and that's what you and that again that's what the fitting is for to determine mm -hmm. What's the best stuff that can go in your bag so you play golf longer, right? We yeah. want you to enjoy golf. We want you to play it longer, and that's just the way that goes. So we look like we're going to have one once all the pieces parts come in, but I feel pretty good about <laughs> getting the first one. I, it, it, they are good looking. I did hit them, and they do go to the inside. They do eliminate, and although I, that really wasn't a huge problem for me, but these, yeah, I was hitting way right. There was – you know, and again, left-handed, I didn't hit to the left. I right. was inside and it, it's quite a bit. So it, it did what exactly what it was, what it was intended for, which is really, really cool. And mm -hmm. uh, so is there anything else new coming out of the, coming out of the bay that you can talk about or, or no? Well, let's put it this way. I wouldn't sleep on Callaway to close out the year. Uh, we we're really busy over here. We've got a lot of, um, exciting stuff down the chute. And, you know, the, the big birth of B21 and the Reva line are uh, for higher handicappers. Um, but I'll just tell the low handicappers to keep their eyes and ears open. Well, you've hit the, you've hit the, uh, what is it, the rotation for the Apex, All right? That's, uh, there we... <laughs> I, I can neither I confirm, <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that. Yeah. Good. Well, we're in our we're in a rotation. So the Maverick's been really strong for us. I mean, it's been a it's been a good it's been a good family brand. Uh, there, you know, you can see a lot of similarities between maybe the Max and the Bertha, except for the offset and some of the stuff that goes in it, which is just another opportunity to switch things around to fit your to fit your game, and that's really what we're mm -hmm. looking for. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's it. So Nate, here's a couple of questions. <clears throat> And guys, if you guys uh, have any questions for him, don't be afraid to ask. The uh, so being the, being the guy in marketing, but you're running the the fitting room. Have you done any fittings on anybody that is that the the world would know? Yeah. Um, so t so it's funny. So we're really lucky. We have a lot of really 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 good fitters here at Callaway, um, and. But every now and again, you'll get someone who had listened to the podcast and says, hey, I'd like to be fit with Nate or, you know, like, is Nate around? I would like to do that. So um, I've had a couple, um, especially when we were doing Callaway Live, a lot of the Callaway Live guests that would come in, um, I did some of those. So Reggie Bush, uh, oh. the NFL player, um, Luke Wilson, the actor, 
Um, uh, those are two. Oh, um, uh, there was um, Manny Machado's brother came with him. So that was <laughs> – but I'll tell you what; those two guys can hit the hit the golf ball a long, long way. Um, and then um, I'm blanking on his name right now, which is a shame on me because I shouldn't. But um, the lead singer for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I blanking that, on his I name. I saw that live. I saw that live. Uh, that one that Harry did with him. That was actually a very it, cool. Thing. Yeah, he that guy loves golf. Um, he had so much fun. It was so much fun working with him. He would hit, um, he would like hit the hit like a hybrid and he would flush it and he would make the most beautiful sound, almost like singing about like how excited he was. And he was, uh, he was a lot of fun to fit. Um, uh, so that, that was a really good one too. Good, good. So the, and that's the, you know, some of the things that you run into, I've, uh, um, I had the opportunity to fit an NBA player and I didn't think I was going to make it because even with a 12 foot ceiling, that dude was <laughs> you know, seven foot tall. It's, it's a tough sell. And then, well, my uh, co my co-host on the fitting room, he does fittings all day. He, he works down at uh, Garrett pond. He works down Garrett, at the, right? yeah. yeah, he works down at the, um, Ely Callaway performance center. Um, so he's doing a lot more fittings than me who I'm like a de I'm a desk job guy mostly, but, um, he, he'll come in and he'll talk about how, you know, he has this, this NFL player, this MLB player, or this actor, or this celebrity who came and got fit. Like, um, um, uh, it was Adam Thielen, the receiver for the Vikings was here not too long ago. And, um, he has all these guys who we would consider, you know, high profile athletes or high profile guys who have his phone number, who think Garrett is a celebrity because he helped them with their golf game. And he's <laughs> got all these, he's got all these guys that have man crushes on him. So you help a man with his golf game, you have it forever. That's right. My, uh, <laughs> the only one I, I got to do Clay Walker. He was a country Western singer doing very good. He came by here. I've been, I've been feeling pretty lucky that we got to see him it was funny because he was uh he was heading to pebble beach for the pro-am and he was a big toddler's guy and i said well they ain't working out so well for you dude and uh, we <laughs> got him in, we actually got him into a set of callaways and as there you I go. Saw, and as i was he was walking around i was watching him and i was eyeing the clubs just trying to figure out whether or not he was getting to it or not and Sure enough, he was still playing them. I thought maybe they'd switch him out when he got over there on the trailer, but uh, he was doing pretty good for that one, so not too bad. Nice. All right, well, let's go around the sea. We got Brendan. He's here from Ireland. Brendan, thank you for coming again. And Warren's from England. He's he's out there. Jack is back. Lombard, Illinois. Russ, buddy, how's it going? Hopefully you're hitting those clubs good now. Willard. He's from Northern Ohio and it's 75. It was been a really couple of good days here. Uh, I, have you guys been native? You guys been experiencing the, was it the brownouts or I guess we would call them or the road, the roading, the rolling. Outages? Yeah. Yeah. Last week was pretty hot here. Um, and it was more humid than normal. So it felt hotter. You know, it's hard. I, I recognize, uh, you know, no one's going to be sympathetic to the California guy complaining about weather. So I, I was I'll say that in jest, but yeah, last week we would get, you know, text messages throughout the day saying like, it's a flex time, you know, reduce your usage, et cetera. Um, and then uh, a couple weeks ago, actually the Callaway building lost power and it ended up messing a little bit with our, our podcast studio here, but now we're all good. This week's cooled off a little bit. It's mid seventies, not too humid. So we're back to normal. My son lives out there in San Jose. He works for Netflix. Oh, Nice. And uh, we, whenever the this idiocy of what we're going through stops, and maybe maybe and come make a run down. There. I guess it's a quite a haul from there, though. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I grew up up there, and so my, all my family is up in Northern California, and they've actually had much much bigger and longer heat wave than we have down here. By they're probably fifteen degrees warmer up there than it is here, which is not normally the case, but um, that's contributing, unfortunately, to all the fires up there as well. Yeah. 
So Jack is watching us from Phoenix, Arizona. He's out there. Warren Talk says hello, hot. Nathan. <laughs> we got Timothy Robinson from Kentucky. And Doug is in from Florida. And Robin's been answering. Brian is in. There's Brian. Hi, guys. So how low did you go, Brian? We want to know. Brian plays to like a plus two. So every time he oh. comes in, we do we do a check-in. And again, with Matt, who has probably been here, been the longest following guy. He's just north of us. Shot a 69, followed up with an 81. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt's got game, dude. He, he's a he's a tall guy, and with an abbreviated swing, and he still gets it out there. And I bet I bet he's playing in the plus handicaps as well. Wow! Here we go. We got the Netherlands in the house. All right, Thanks, buddy. All right. Look at here, Warren just links Callaway's all over it. Thank you, Warren. Here we go, Nate. How do you feel about hard stepping? Uh, it depends who's asking me. So uh, on the two ends of the spectrum. So if you have, you know, a high handicapper who's saying like, hey, these shafts feel soft, let's hard step them, probably not going to make much of a difference. If you're a plus two, like some of the uh, your listeners, then it's all about getting the feel that makes you confident. And so this is specifically important, I think, when it comes to uh, weight. So sometimes when you go up in flex, you go up in weight. And you see that a lot, whether it's dynamic golds, whether that's KBS, C tapers, KBS tour. When you move up in a flex, you also move up in a weight. So right. uh, for some golfers, they don't want that weight, but they do want a little bit of firmer feel or, or a stiffer flex. And so uh, that is when I think hard stepping can um, pay off by keeping a consistent weight getting it a little bit firmer. Um, but then you got to watch out uh, on the wet, on the wedges. You can't really uh, hard step down there, which is honestly, it's okay because you probably want your wedges a little softer anyway. And I'm got, I have a set of clubs in there right now that that's what I'm, that's what I've done is I've, uh, he wanted a particular shaft and he wanted hard step one. I said, you, well, you got to pay attention to the fact that your wedge is going to play just a, basically like the wedge not not right. a hard step wedge and right. uh it'll be a little different but in reality yeah you get that just that just that hint of snap into it and just a little bit just because we're only talking about tweaks we're not talking about right. big monster changes we're just little itty bitty things going on that right. would, would work on that all right and i don't think you'll see a huge change in spin and launch it, it'll be more of a feel thing Right. Here's my buddy from Sweden. He's always he's made it in every time from around. He's all been, right. He's been moving some stuff. So all right. <laughs> Mike, definitely the club for you. Well, they should be coming out now. We the so I'm probably not the only fitter guy that's getting his stuff beforehand, right? We talked about you know I, I'm getting it, and thanks to the guys for that for sure, but. You want to get, you know, if you're truly interested in this stuff, go find the fitter that's got it because what is it? It's in September, right? What was the release date again? September 10th is when they'll start shipping if you pre-ordered or if um, or you can buy them in stores. But starting now, um, you can, uh, you know, select fitters like yourself, have uh, demo parts. You can go get fit immediately and you can place your orders um, and, and uh, then those will ship uh nine ten and just a little secret sometimes if the clubs are built sooner um they may ship them a little bit a couple days early also there you go and what we also the uh, local pga member up north uh actually grew up golfing with tommy bolt all right <laughs> so and uh he's got a very 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 large ladies league and uh so i've approached him about uh, doing a video fitting somebody into a, a Reva. So that ought mm -hmm. to be, that, that'll be cool to see and make sure it works mm -hmm. out well. Yeah. All right. Slide L Louisiana. We are, we're almost on all four corners of the U S mm -hmm. Leeds UK. Mr. Joe, thank you very much, sir, for talking again. 
<laughs> just before midnight, yeah. dude. I was going to say, it's me. pretty late. It's pretty late over there in Europe. So I got to appreciate the, uh, the, you know, staying up past the bedtime. Yep. Scott's on. Here we go. Phil. Phil, what's going on, sir? How are you? The uh, I got right here, buddy. There it <laughs> is. I was trying to figure out if cilantro was something that you could say for Scotland, but I was I was going to hold that one back. <laughs> All right, here we go. Redemption. Here we go from Indiana. This young man has come to visit me. He's getting his start in the business as well. All right. Scott's from Michigan. Here we go. Tony Noblesville. When will the Big Bertha be available to the public? Well, Nolansville, sorry, not Noblesville. That's in Indiana. So we already took care of that one. How about that? A little forethought going on. So are they going to do that with Fairway Woods 2 to eliminate the slice? Well, let me hook you up with a shot here, buddy. Uh, <laughs> right there. How's that? Yeah, there's look, a lot of left in that club. Yep, and a little thin, right? Mm -hmm. And a good look in the bag, mm -hmm. which is always important. So there you go. All right. Lofts on the fairway medals. I'm going to pull up those specs here just to make sure I get it right. But um, let's see here. We we I believe it goes up pretty high, um, but it is... Pulling up now. All right, so we got a three wood at 15 degrees, uh, the five wood at 18, the seven wood at 21, and the nine wood at 24. Ooh. Nine woods, those are always good. So yeah, the, we'll go through that one will go. That one will go high. That one's for for launching. There you go. Doug wants to know if we hit the ball hot. If you want to, where would he put tape on the head? All right, just like we were talking about where the Bertha throws that weight forward to reduce spin, that's also kind of a launch angle issue as well. If you want the club to hit higher, kind of give you an idea, we'll use this guy right there, right? You come right back in this neck of the woods, and if you're if you really are just, if you're hitting it in the middle and you just want it, I would just put it just like that, okay? If you're, if you're kind of all over the face a little bit, then give yourself a little room in the back right over here. And and that would be a little bit. Now, you know, it, again, it depends on the type of tape that you're using. You know, the quarter-inch tape is the most common stuff. But you, you just don't want to just take this big, long piece because what will happen is it will fold. And then it can get caught, right? Because we all hit, every once of us will get into the ground, we'll do a drop kick, and then it, it'll rip the tape off, right? So you want to be really smooth. You take pieces, parts, and you go all the way around and smooth it off with a wooden handle, and you'll be, you'll be far better for it. And a couple of strips, not just one, right? Because one doesn't do diddly, hmm. and, and, and you need to. You it's need about, to it it's about four inches of a quarter inch lead tape, I believe, to get two grams, right? Which would be essentially a swing weight point. So that's a, I mean, four inches is a good amount of lead tape, and that's only one, you know, that's only four grams. So yeah, like you said, you got to uh, uh, make sure you're putting on enough to make a difference, but also be aware of what effect that's going to have on swing weight. And you may have to move to a, a heavier grip to counteract that or potentially low, uh, shorten the uh, length in the club a quarter inch or something like that. Uh, sorry, shorten the club a quarter inch, something like go. that. Yeah. Yep. So Warren says they don't – sorry, they said they don't – a two or three iron <laughs> award. So the the four iron is what did we say the four iron was like seventeen degrees? So oh, that's okay. No, maybe not. That's too that's low. That's like too 21 short. One maybe. But yeah, so the the irons. Uh, this is actually something that Phil did in his bag. He really liked the uh, Epic forged irons. And so what he did was he asked for it in a three iron, but we didn't make it in a three iron. So he took the four iron, added a little weight to it, and bent it to the loft of the three iron. So, okay, so here you go. The four iron is 19 degrees. So that's a pretty strong four iron anyway. So you bend that two degrees flat, that's seven – or two degrees strong, that's 17 degrees. That is essentially a two iron. So uh, you could get – 
you could get plenty creative. I don't think people will have an issue of having not being able to hit these that that iron far enough. All right. So there you go, Warren. Rob made it in. How about that? Now we've got now we've got more th more North America. Hey, there you go. Hey, Rob. Rob's Canadian. We got Yukon living. We know where that guy's at. <laughs> <laughs> well done, buddy. Thank you for coming on. Here we go. What handicaps do we have in here? Well, for me, my handicap is I'm left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, with the actually, I actually took a lesson. Kind of, I was fitting a guy who was a. It turned out he was a an ex PGA instructor. He moved on to other things, and he uh, we talked about a few things. And I'll tell you what, that's turned my game around, and uh, it's been it's been pretty good. And I've been now my my numbers on my scorecard start with a seven. Although the last number is really really big, but I, I <laughs> from based on whatever I've done, I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what do you get out there? Can you hang with the guys that are out on the fit on the on the testing center? I well, those guys are good because they hit golf balls all day, every day. That's all they do. So they have a little bit of an advantage there. I've been the last couple of years. I've been bouncing between about a three five and a four five. So, um, so you know, I I still feel like I've got a lot of work to do, but you know, not nothing to nothing to be too embarrassed about either. Good. Well, I was got when I got tested. I got tested by the guy that that deals with Phil. I for oh, luck, yeah. I, can't remember, I can't remember his name, but good golly, can he he can smack the golf ball? Yeah, and hit the hit the cover clean off of it. Yep. Look at Rob says he's a twelve, working to get into singles. That's good. <laughs> Don't keep one. That's okay. That's what you know. You know what? There, there's as the long thing. as you're having right. fun. Right, right. As yeah. long as you're enjoying golf. And you're having fun, you know. You're going out there and strike it. If score is even that important, that you know, there's some places where you can actually actually just play golf and not even keep a scorecard and just enjoy the environment, mm -hmm. right? And and oh my gosh, they're everywhere. One of my favorites was out there. It's in, uh, and I could go around there for days. And it's Half Moon Bay. Yes. Is out there you, I just gorgeous that place is amazing. Gorgeous. The ocean course is one of my favorite golf courses. That place is fantastic. Yeah. It, it you know, in order to get there, you're driving through all the forest and then you pop out. It's I've deemed it it's where the hippies grew up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is it's really, really nice. And they do yeah. support they support the seals. And when I mean the seals, I don't mean the kind of flop around on the beach. Well, they kind of do, but the <laughs> navy seals. And yeah. so there you go. And uh, Warren says he's got some 16s. That's what I've got in the back. So that's working out pretty good. Rob's hitting the uh, Rogue Sub. Good for you. Jack's hitting some Mizunos. What else we got here? Talking about high handy Lake Charles. Great talk. Should happen more often. Well, you know, we get. Keep on going. Maybe we'll get, if we don't bore Nate to death, maybe we can have him back on another time when we're releasing some more stuff. Always That'll happy to chat. Yeah. Here we go. Jack's driving. He's gaming that. Where are we at here? Colin. Jim. There you go. My pro has advised me to change the torque on my driver shaft to assist in improving on my strikes. Your thoughts, please. Okay. So when we when we're talking about torque, we're talking about this right on a golf shaft. We're talking about twisting, twisting on a golf shaft. And when and it is certainly a parameter that's been discussed in the past. And for years, torque followed weight. Okay, torque followed weight. So as the weight of the shaft got higher, the the number got smaller, and that meant it rotated less. Okay. And, and it was so uh, torque became forgotten and because it just became part of the club, you know, that, that was just the way it was. So lightweight shafts torqued a lot, heavyweight shafts torqued very little, and that's the way you just live with it. Now, UST came out and they brought torque back in some of their designs. They have the same weight categories and they would have like very low torque very and medium torque, which would be the standard. And then they would have some that were uh, a lighter torque. That's a lot of engineering, 
right? Particularly when you're going down weight classes and flexes, it's that's a lot of in, a lot of engineering to make that go. And so, what we torque is something that yes, I do look at, but it becomes it's a tweaker kind of thing. So if you're because torque now you start talking droop and you're talking about face closure and you're talking about the whole thing. And if he is talking about lowering your torque, making it more stiff because you're a solid ball striker all day, you better believe it. And going the other way is if you're maybe you need a little bit more help and you're just let's like Nate did, we'll go from one side to the other. Now let's say you're at the other end and maybe you do need help. Uh, you're not necessarily that most solid ball striker, and you need a little bit of that help to get you to get you going, and and it actually makes the club feel better, okay? Mm -hmm. And you, it'll make the club feel better, and it'll get you close and get you through, and you can like it. And then when you you know you get to that next stage in the golf evolution, then you can move up to the other thing. But so yeah. I I just read an article about um, shaft. Oh, driver shaft usage on the PGA Tour. And the number one shaft on the PGA Tour currently is a Mitsubishi uh, chemical Kurokage shaft. And if you look at the specs on the entire Kuro Kurokage line, it's actually fairly high torque values relative to some of the other, you know, the old school Diamana whiteboards or some mm. of the more stiffer like Al the Aldela Rogue shafts. Um, and I think part of that, like, I think you just mentioned it is about the feel of the shaft. Some people like to have a little bit more responsiveness of a feel and other people prefer it to be like stout and more boardy. And, you know, sometimes we say boardy, like it's a negative thing. Some golfers prefer that, um, because they feel like there's less variation, but, um, the golf ball stays on the club face for such a short period of time that by the time the club actually, the ball deflects and the club twists, the ball's gone already. So uh, in my experience, it, I, I've always looked at torque as a, a manipulator of feel and how do you like your shaft to feel. The weight class I think is going to be more important. The flex is going to be more important. The length is going to be more important. And then torque gets it just feeling the way that you want it to feel. Does it feel responsive for you or does it feel – uh, you know, very stiff and stout. There you go, guys. That from both both <laughs> both sides of the planet, right here. We're yeah. talking about torque. That's one of the you know, and that's really a thing that doesn't you know it gets discussed, and it's about a oh I don't know about a three second conversation, and you move on. But in reality, what we're what we're telling you, and you're talking about that the Kurokagi, right? And mm -hmm. uh, Acker was getting some love with a TZ. Five, I believe it was TZ five or TZ six. It was the same thing. Uh, stiff flex, a lot of torque, big number. All right. And they were just they were loving it. And the, for the very reason why you were stating it, they could feel it. All right. Yeah. If you did a blind test, the people would say the higher torque felt better to them. Right. And torque, you can also you could get an X flex with a lot of with a high torque value that feels soft. You get a reg flex with a low torque value that feels really stiff. So that's, uh, it, you know, it kind of messes with, with the, your sense of feels a little bit. Okay. So what else are we looking at here? Yukon wants to know what shaft company that you guys partnered with. I don't think you're going to get that answer, bud. <laughs> they don't tell me, they don't tell me that stuff anyway. You know, they don't want, uh, they don't want it leaking out. So yeah, they're, but, but I promise you, you've heard it. You've heard of it. There you go, Tom. That hey, club building is a is a it's it's like a fix that you always got to have, you know, to go down there and put it. Everybody likes doing something like that. Club building is like its own hobby in addition to the sport. You know, oh, geez. I have plenty of fun just building the clubs that you don't even need to use them. Just look at them. There you go, Chris. Anytime, buddy. Just schedule through Robin. You know what you can do. Is a new driving a iron new coming driving soon? Driving iron coming soon. Mm, can you let well, that one come out? Our last driving iron, I believe, was the X Forged Utility from 2018. That's correct. So it seems like we might be due for one. There you go. Yeah, maybe there it goes. 
Here we go. Bobby J's Reef Tank. I know your Callaway guy just got fitted for a set of irons for the first time. Ended up with a set of 410s. Dude, the Ping 410 is a fine club, dude. Don't don't even think about it. The one thing, you know, of course, the Callaway guys want, want you in Callaway stuff, but they also recognize that there's other stuff out there. And we've we've had deep conversations about that uh, with, with, you know, with Corey and the guys that are on that particular side of the house. And so that's fine. Two weeks ago from Golfer's Warehouse. All right. I'm 6'5", so they fit me to plus one irons. Hey, if they work, that is phenomenal, right? As long again, have fun, stay in the stay in the game. And my we brother is my brother's six four, and he uh, is also one inch over on his irons, and it makes a world of difference, just posture wise. Oh my god! Um, and yeah, it's it's crazy. So uh, he ended up going a little bit stiffer than his swing speed would say because they're so long. You need you know the it plays a little softer. There you go. And here's your answer. Here's your answer, Nate. Bill, yeah, Phil, Phil Bailey. Bailey. Yep. All right. I, I really like Philip Bailey. He's a really good guy. And the Maverick hybrids are killing it. Way to go, Russ. That, Russ came over to us from Illinois, and uh, he works with uh, Caterpillar. And oh. uh, engineering guy. It, dude, dude's fun to talk to. He really was. Can we really do good. some? Can we do a product trade? <laughs> What's that? I'll trade Russ some golf clubs for uh, some Caterpillar products. <laughs> well, Russ, like there a you back, go, man. Like a backhoe, maybe something like that. <laughs> I got some yard, got some yard work to do. Well, the stuff that he's into is, is if I recall correctly, he does the big stuff where the wheels are taller than you and I stand on each ah, other's shoulders. Might but, not yeah. fit my yard. Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> if, if it does, it won't be turning around much. <laughs> Here you go. Al's in uh, Mara, Florida. Merritt Island, Florida. Awesome. All right. What pros currently play Callaway? Well, they Callaway's got a huge stable of folks. Yeah, we've got a big staff. The guys that you probably know of the most is going to be Phil Mickelson. It's probably the most. Um, Xander Shoffley, I believe, is our highest ranked player currently. Um, Mark Leishman, he won recently on tour um francesco molinari just won the open championship um what was that a year ago two years ago um henrik stenson of course a staple out in europe um that that diablo tour three wood that he's had in his bag for like 12 years um i love, Kevin I love, that, dude's, I love <laughs> that dude's uh i love that dude's sense of humor oh he's yeah. great and he we actually just launched a podcast uh Callaway helps produce it, but he's the host of it and he gets the guests of it. So if, uh, if you want to hear Henrik talking, that's a good, it's usually about 45 minutes or so each episode. Um, could be a fun one to check out. Um, some other guys we got, uh, Kevin Kisner has been in the mix a lot lately. Danny Willett won the masters a few years ago. Kevin Nas has been putting the lights out uh, and he's famous for, you know, walking it in the hole. Oh, yeah. um, our probably. Canadian friend, Probably the nicest guy on the Callaway staff, Adam Hadwin. Um, great guy. Uh, Brandon Grace, Jim Furyk, Alex Norin. Um, we just had a couple of guests. We just had a couple of guests on the fitting room. Um, Dylan Fertelli. Uh, he's been playing well lately. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, so we're ro rooting for him. And then um, – uh george cypher or sorry chase cypher we had on a couple of weeks ago as well there's like 30 something guys so there's a bunch more but i i, I hit the the most well-known ones i'd say there you go. looks like glenn hit the original big bertha back in the day yep and uh thanks to you guys the uh the i've i can't tell you how many of those i've reshafted in this year the original ones the OG Big Berthas? Oh yeah, I get a. I, wow. You'd be surprised. I get I get a few of those when they get them in here. Some people will get it for uh, this. My dad played it, and I just want to have it on my wall as a remembrance. Some guys uh, like Glenn played it, you know, and they may have liked it a, a bunch. And you just the different sizes and stuff. It's just really good. Right. Brian didn't get a play, huh? Oh, I wanted to hear about this four man that you're the two man that you had going on. 
uh, we've made stuff for him and his brother, and they both they both spank it. So it's pretty mm. good. Here we go. Played vintage blades from the 70s and 80s, like Wilson Staff. Always felt heavier than modern clubs, and it feels like the club swung itself. Well, you you wouldn't be wrong. They were heavier back in the day, and they right. they the a lot of the shafts back in the day were 125, 130 at minimum, right? right. And and the heads were phenomenal, just phenomenally heavier, and, and so you're not you are absolutely not wrong. The real problem is is that with the it, Again, it, it was because a lot could have been driven by the golf ball. And the, the golf ball was made in a different way, and it reacted differently off the face. Well, golf ball technology took off in one direction, and the clubs had to keep up with it. And and so, you know, there and there's still guys out there that could play that kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, it, the, the lofts have gotten so much stronger and, got, and the technology has gotten so much better – to be able to get those same launch angles with the with the stronger loft, and you get a little hotter face, and the, you're not sacrificing spin, so you know they're they're basically losing <laughs> when it comes right down to it. But the the forging processes in the day when you know layers of copper and the and the chrome and the whole nine yards, it just what they did back then was a lot of artistry. There were you'd be surprised. I mean, there were still still a lot of architectural work done in it but not like it is today like i mean even the what nate was just talking about what goes into an iron is just you know it's fourth dimensionally cool and that's what we got all right so brian he's gonna get finally get to play oh that's been there so there's rob there you go edmonton he's the man oh my gosh melbourne australia steven good gravy thank you sir Oh, I lost. I must have had him on a time frame. So we're on. We've gone two minutes over. I'm gonna get a couple more in here, and then we will call it a day. And oh, geez, oh Pete, I'm sorry, Nate, if you even had a chance to look at this. Uh, there you go. Colin thinks we're on there. Difference between a B21 and a Maverick Max. Uh. I think what you're going to find is that the B21 is a little more upright and the B21 will appear to be more closed at address. And, uh, but you're right, the adjustable weight's there. Well, this one has an adjustable weight as well. It's just in the back. So, you know, you could get that as well. Plus, it's an adjustable head. Yes, yes, I do. Cape Cod MA. Well, geez, thank you guys. Okay, fellas and ladies, hopefully there's a, maybe one or two in there. We've gone three minutes over. Again, thank you guys for being all over the world again. We've spanned the globe. And, and Nate, thank you for Nate. Uh, Nate's getting ready to go to a podcast. So if you guys like listening to that kind of stuff, find the it's the fitting room. It's on uh, it's on XM. And oh, Nate, there he came back. He disappeared to me. There he goes. Sorry about that. My computer died on me. Oh, it shut down. Well, we were just getting ready to sign off. So, Nate, tell them what you're getting ready to do on the podcast so they can come and come and listen to you on the podcast. And if they need anything, where they can go. Yeah, so at uh, 5 o'clock Pacific, uh, 8 Eastern, we're going to be going live on Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio. So if you subscribe to Sirius XM, it's – I think channel 92 for some people, channel 208 for others. Um, we're going to be talking about fitting. We're going to be talking about clubs. Uh, and we invite all the calls to come in and give us a call, ask your fitting and equipment questions, and we will answer them for you there live on there. We've got plenty of other uh, topics to discuss as well, so it should be a good a good show tonight. And I call in as the crotchety old, crotchety old golfer guy and and try and get exactly. there to come get off his rocker and all Hey, what are yes. you talking about over we, here? <laughs> we invite that. Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> there you go. So, if they wanted to know anything about uh, Callaway, I mean, guys, if you uh, you can always send stuff to me. But if there, what's the best way to get maybe a Callaway answer? If it was a Callaway specific answer. Yeah. So uh, you can always hit hit us on Twitter. It's an easy way to go. 
Callaway community, callawaygolf.com slash community is the place to go. Um, by far, it'll be the fastest way. You ask a question there, uh, especially if it's a fitting and equipment related question, you go to the fitting corner thread, ask your question and someone will answer it. And the best questions we pull out, we put on our podcast every Monday. We also bring to the live show every Monday night. Yeah, I'm on there. I'm JM something F9A or whatever. I don't. I didn't even switch my name. All right. <laughs> All right. So Nate, again, thank you so very much for joining us. Thanks for explaining what's going on in the B21. Thanks for talking with the guys from around the world. And hopefully, we can do this again. It was a real pleasure to be here with you, and um, uh, hopefully, I'll be back on again sometime. All righty. Guys, thank you so very much. And as always, let's see your scores go low. Go.